Fun is an integral part of being and many factors account as to why we consider certain things to be funny and others awful. The way we see things, interpret and interact with them form the basis of how we categorize things and events either as funny or awful. One of the reasons that makes sickness weird is their preferences. They don't do well following the crowd nor do well conforming to what every Jack and Jill considers to be the norm. They set their own norms and decide what is funny and fun to them, regardless of what others think of them. Fun is relative, and what the ideal man may consider as fun, to the sigma it is pure nonsense and a waste of time. Here is a countdown of the five awful things sigmas consider fun in no particular order. Cause The first thing that comes to a sigma's mind when they pick up the phone to make a call is, what am I going to say? After saying that, then what? Sigmas are good at many things, but the one thing the suck at is sustaining a conversation that revolves around mundane life events over a long call. Talking on the phone for long sometimes require them to jot down the talking points. If not, they will easily forget or mix up what they were calling to say, especially in the case where they are calling in for a request. Talking on the phone is all about expressing how you feel and what you think with words. But the Sigma finds it very difficult and stressful to synchronize the two because they never seem to find the right set of words that capture how they feel at any given time. Given the chance, Sigmas can go forever without a phone. They don't like making or receiving calls as often as others would want to. If they must use a phone, then they would rather prefer texting to calling because it gives them the opportunity to collect their thoughts, edit them before presenting them to the public. Staying away from making or receiving calls keeps them away from social anxiety and justifies their preference for texting apps like email, Twitter and WhatsApp to Instagram and Facebook which requires your physical presence. Sigmas in business have found a way around making calls without stressing too much by delegating the less important calls and making only the few important ones. Sarcasms Sigmas love sarcasm because it plays a vital role in their day-to-day -day functioning even though some people might not see how important it is to them but find them insulting. It is through the telling of witty jokes that Sigmas get to connect well with others and camouflage their awkward tendencies in public. Sigmas use sarcasms to lessen the effect of their words on people's feelings because their direct way of communicating, saying it exactly how it comes to mind, leaves others hurting, especially the feeling types, who tend to see Sigmas as robots that don't care about other people's feelings. Being funny is also at the core of being a Sigma. It is what makes them the loving and friendly individuals they are. There is no point being a Sigma if you cannot make people laugh from time to time. Sigmas deliberately choose to be funny just to make the other person happy by telling witty sarcasms. Sarcasms can be used as a double-edged sword by Sigmas either to show off their wit or to cleverly insult the stupidity of others. But when they are discussing with emotionally sensitive individuals, Sigmas often use sarcasms to make their words less hurtful and friendly, especially in the case where they want to critique their behavior. Although sarcasm is the weakest form of humor, people still enjoy and appreciate witty sarcasms. Arguing Sigmas enjoy arguing and consider arguments as the best arena for idea sharing, concepts formulation and decision making. Arguments often ensue when understanding is compromised. But in the case of Sigmas, arguing is the path to better understanding. They love to argue because it is mentally stimulating. Some people find this tendency of the Sigma to be annoying, unnecessary and sometimes as a way to show off. Sigmas enjoy arguing because it is thought-provoking. It gives them the avenue to refine their thoughts the opportunity to learn new things and the chance to test their intelligence on others. During arguments, the calm nature and ability to keep aside the emotion gives them the mental clarity to better understand how others react under intense pressure. 
Since arguing is considered both as fun and as a learning process to sigmas, they sometimes use arguments to test people's level of tolerance and ability to reason under intense pressure. One common misconception about why sigmas argue a lot is that they argue to win and show off their wit. But in most cases, this is wrong because their primary reason for arguing is to learn and not win to show off. Even though the thrills that comes with winning an argument is hard to go by without suffering a moment. Ignorant people are easily intimidated and irritated by the Sigma's love for arguing and debating problems. Because they love arguing, some of them are able to make careers out of debating in the case of lawyers. Sigmas have been notoriously noted for inciting public agitations. They are often the brain behind most strike actions, activist movements, especially those back in environmental protection. But one good thing about them is that they believe in the force of argument and the argument of force. Being alone. The reason Sigmas love staying at the edge of town or countryside is primarily to keep away from strangers and unwanted visitors and also to stay away from the noisy metropolitan areas. Sigmas love to be left alone and will do whatever it takes to be alone. Sigmas are tigers of the human jungle. They are solitary, independent and enjoy isolation. One of the happiest moments in the life of a Sigma is when they are alone. Walking along a lonely forest path or sitting by themselves along the shores of a beach watching waves as they come and go. Being left alone is an essential ritual to being a Sigma. They cannot do without some alone time. If they don't, their normal day-to-day -day functioning will be compromised. Without enough rest, Sigmas won't be able to think properly. They will be grumpy, tense and anxious and will suffer from brain fatigue. The path of Sigmas is the path of loneliness. Even though Sigmas prefer to be alone, they are never truly lonely because in their alone time, that is when most of their creative activities are accomplished. It is during this time that new ideas are formulated, secrets, planned and hashed and new strategies are implemented. When this period of mental hibernation is over, they emerge well equipped, supercharged, revitalized and ready for some ass kicking. Working. Sigmas are workaholics. Doing what they like and doing it to perfection makes them happy than a bowl of popcorn can do. The efficiency and effectiveness of Sigmas can only be compared to that of machines. They are perfectionist and they love it. They hate the idea of letting time pass by just like that except it's doctor's orders. It should not surprise you to almost always find a Sigma in the same corner or spot working with no change in their working environment as the day you first saw it. Sigma struggle with putting off work not because they are unable to make such a decision but because their consciences won't grant them the peace of mind others get after skipping work. Once a Sigma gets started on a particular activity or task, they must complete it before moving on to the next one. Even as students, they always like to answer their questions in chronological order beginning from the first to the last question or vice versa. It is rare to find a disordered Sigma. If you see disorder, know that beneath it lies an ordered system.